Welcome back for part two of my Florida excursion. And now I'm heading north from the Keys and the Everglades and gonna bird from Miami up to Jupiter and inland. Midday heat, but I've got a Bachman sparrow singing out here in the pine barrens. I don't know what you call this, pine lands. That would be a lifer and I wanna see it. Well, that was pretty cool. Just standing here, kind of bummed out. I couldn't see the Bachman Sparrow and his two swallowtail kites came kind of right overhead. The lighting is <laughs> pretty bad, but these clouds kind of saved the day. Got some interesting silhouettes, which man, the swallowtail kite is one of the most interesting silhouettes of a bird there is with these big puffy cumulonimbus clouds. A little artsy, but I think I also got my portrait shot. Little did I know at the time that I'd be seeing dozens more swallowtail kites over the next couple days. So that means it's time for a celebratory, celebratory, celebratory key lime Vortman wafer. And not only that, a bubbler. I haven't, oh sorry, bubbly. They don't carry bubbler down here, which is a bummer. It's my favorite. And then researching on eBird, where there had been recent, semi-recent, red cockaded woodpecker sightings, I found this place, J.W. Corbett. I drove in, and I'm like, oh, this doesn't look like much. But wow, <laughs> what a place. I love it. Check this out. Those are some long pine needles. This is from the Slash Pine, and... That's the pine you find in southern Florida, and then once you get north of Lake Okeechobee, it kind of turns more to longleaf pine. Another downpour, but it'll clear up in a few minutes. Many people don't really associate Florida with pines, but vast areas inland, historically. Pine scrub, pine grasslands. That was a very satisfying lifer, Bachman Sparrow. In December 2003, Bridget and I walked around central Florida in a good habitat, but it was winter and I had the the old cassette tape player and you know where the guy announces Bachman Sparrow. And I, Bachman Sparrow. And then I have to rewind it, click, click, fast forward, click, click, find it, go again, Buckman Sparrow, and it would play the <laughs> We never did get one. Today was my lucky day. Well, I knew the habitat and driving through the J.W. Corbett Wildlife Management Area. I mean, this habitat, just perfect. Fairly widely spread pines with very little sparse vegetation underneath, but uh, palmettos and other scrub vegetation. And that's what they like. And they are still singing here in, I guess, is it late July? No, it's mid-July now. And uh, I don't know if I can eat another celebratory Key Lime Vortman's sugar cookie. I'm gonna have to wait till dessert. This is a massive WMA. The auto loop goes for, I don't know, is it 30 miles? Crazy.
There were some cool bold cypress swamps as well. I had a couple really poor looks at Limpkin as they flew away. What a blast. I'm still at the, now I'm at the south end of J.W. Babcock, what is it? Corbett, WMA. And all of a sudden I saw a swallowtail kite over this agricultural field. Stopped, slammed on the brakes, got some f distance photos, and all, all of a sudden it's flying towards me. And it landed up here, and there are three other swallowtail kites. Seems like a, um, parent and two youngsters who are, can you hear them? Constantly begging. So they're like, they look fully grown. They're like, right, the teenagers. And they're fully able to uh, capture prey and feed on their own. But no, they'd rather have mom or dad provide it for them. So, so I lost my light, but I'm just kind of waiting to see if, uh, mom or dad comes back there's one of the adults is with the two young but uh, the other one is went out hunting and they eat insects so i'm guessing grasshoppers This is the habitat, the scrub habitat of the Florida scrub jay, and they burn this about every five years to keep the habitat intact. I've seen about half a dozen to a dozen already, and they're all banded, of course. There's maybe about 160 in the park, I think. Florida Gopher Tortoise Burrow. Love to see him. But he didn't want to come out and play. So I drove over to another part of the park, up an area of slash pine grasslands. Well, this is where I saw the red cockaded woodpeckers, two of them. But all I saw was them fly. Big white cheek patch. Bigger than a downy, smaller than a hairy, and they landed, but unfortunately I couldn't get on them, and they flew off. But uh, thanks to Shelly from Florida Audubon for pointing me in the right direction. Shelly also pointed out these artificial nest cavities for the red cockaded woodpeckers. They're removable so they can check on the birds, clean them out, but uh, the limiting factor for these species is pines that are big enough with heart rot that they can excavate for cavities. So uh, this is a, a very clever solution and it looks very natural. Pipewort, area colon septangular, I believe. <laughs> this thing is about 18, 20 inches tall. In Minnesota, it grows in wetlands. It never gets bigger than about <laughs> three, four, five inches, six inches. Didn't expect this. In the gift shop, I found Dave Benson's Woodpeckers of North America. Awesome book that uh, I published quite a few years ago now, but pretty cool that they're carrying it. And I was not expecting this. Brown-headed nuthatch this far south in Florida. Yeah, bonus bird. Seriously, I've got no shadow right now. The sun is straight overhead. And moments later, I mean, I'm still pretty close to the nature center along the main park road. I found this. This was a shock and a pleasant surprise.
Well, how about that? This morning, hiked mile, two miles through these pine flats, looking for red cockaded woodpecker, and then right around lunchtime, eating my sandwich, leaving the nature center, visitor center, I hear their kind of downy woodpecker like, kind of not call, pull over, and uh, yeah, there's two right up there. Sadly, my camera overheated and I can't shoot any more video for you. Oh, just flew to the other side. I'm gonna go record some audio here. Moving on to my next destination, I found this small flock of cattle egrets doing what they should be doing, following cattle around. This species, originally native to Africa, has literally taken over the world. They were first spotted in the U.S. in the 40s, and by the 50s they were nesting, and by the 70s they were everywhere. Sometimes you just get a tip on a good spot from somebody you just happened to run across, another birder. And that was the case with this Karen T. Marcus Sandhill Crane Park, where uh, she told me there was a massive swallowtailed kite roost. I went there first thing in the morning, but I was a little late. I didn't get far enough down the path, but check this out. Roughly a hundred or so swallowtailed kites kettling leaving their morning roost. Wow, that's spectacular. I'm gonna have to go back sometime. Get up a little earlier. And to think, a couple days ago, I was very excited just to see two circling overhead. It seemed like there was about a hundred, but I took a photo, opened it up in Photoshop, circled the kites by tens and came up with 73. Now I was missing some as I did this with another photo and got closer to a hundred, but yeah. Amazing spectacle. Next was this, oh, I thought, oh, I'll head over to this grassy waters preserve. A snail kite was still on my list, and there'd been some sightings here. Wow, what a neat place. Uh, put it on your list. It is a really, really cool spot with beautiful boardwalks. And, well, wait for it. It's coming up next. This is the butterfly I saw at the hotel in Jupiter and my most wanted for the trip. So maybe I'll get actually now a good photo that's not at ISO 12,800. Another impressive natural area. This is grassy waters preserved, no entrance fee. Incredible boardwalk, there's a nature center. And uh, one of my most wanted birds from this trip was snail kite. And yeah, haven't seen it yet. And so checked eBird and this spot seems as good as any in the Jupiter area. And wow, very cool. Oh, there's that spider lily. I'm gonna get some photos. A decade ago or so, the snail kites were critically endangered. All they eat is the native Florida apple snail, but that has all changed. The invasive apple snail has spread throughout Florida and the country. In just a short time, these kites have switched their diet to these bigger invasives. Their bills have even gotten bigger. Their bodies have gotten bigger in response. And in kind of a bizarre twist of fate, now that they're specializing on these invasives, the Florida apple snail populations are coming back. So uh, yeah, kind of a complex but interesting situation. I imagine we'll be seeing snail kites show up in other states as a rarity soon. After enjoying the nature center, uh, I asked one of the naturalists, where could I see a snail kite? And she said, oh, sometimes they'll just perch right off the boardwalk. I'm like, really? 
walked outside. Boom, snail kite. This adult female then flew towards me and landed uh, maybe 100 feet away and started hunting. I got to spend about an hour and a half just watching her hunt. She caught three snails while I was watching. It was uh, just a stellar experience. Sibley says this species is quote-unquote usually silent, but this gal was sounding off regularly. I love their call. I don't know if you can see my snail kite buddy right out there. He's caught two apple snails. He comes back to the same perch. And unfortunately my camera is overheating again, so I can't get you more video. So instead I made this funky time lapse of her catching an apple snail. I'm waiting to get some more flight shots. And I cramp up in one position, so I switch positions and hope he doesn't fly. <laughs> but he usually just jumps off that perch very quickly. I'm trying to do my best. This is fun. This is what I love. Just sitting and watching um, these guys when you can observe their natural behavior. And even there's a group of students, school kids out there and they're being pretty loud but uh, not bothering the snail kite yet. <laughs> a celebratory rock in the rocking chair on this observation deck because I just spent like an hour and a half with a snail kite and 80 feet away hunting got to watch him catch three apple snails so not a lifer but uh, Bridget and I, I think saw a couple years ago up on the what shark valley of Everglades but uh, first photos ever yeah it was fun and just getting to watch a a wild bird doing what it does and it didn't it wasn't phased by me didn't even look at me so pretty cool I continued on down the boardwalk after my time with the snail kite and found some really cool plants floating hearts which obviously are related to water lilies and this is a lifer the eastern purple bladderwort a carnivorous plant that grows in boggy waters it has these little bladders underwater that trap tiny, tiny aquatic insects, zooplankton, and feeds on them. It also grows in Minnesota, but never seen it here. Main cover on my camera bag. I'm probably out of luck. I wish I had a towel. Matt, the birder from North Carolina I met on day one, gave me yet another awesome tip, this time for finding burrowing owls, Vista View Park, a reclaimed landfill. And wow, crazy. They are <laughs> everywhere in this park. But the first birds I really spent some time with here were these boat-tailed grackles in the midst of courtship. And kind of interesting, there was a third one there that had a part of a lizard <laughs> in its beak. So I'm not sure what was going on, but fun to watch. This is so cool yet bizarre. These burrowing owls nesting here on a former landfill in Florida, South Florida, and here's a little enclosure, it's just a little rope, and, and it's a city park, and, and uh, kids playing, and, and people playing basketball and soccer, and, and here they are, peacefully co-mingling, and I saw an eBird, somebody reported 34 burrowing owls, very different than what you think of, like, you know, out on the western prairies of South Dakota and Wyoming, you know, 
flat prairie dog towns and there's burrowing owls amidst the prairie dogs. It's about as different as you can get here in South Florida, but nonetheless, very cool. Let's get some photos. Well, not quite 34, but I think my final tally was about 17 burrowing owls. Far more than I've seen anywhere else. Canon R5 overheating. Here's a trick. Crank your car's AC to high, take off the lens and let the air blow into your, uh, right into your camera. I know a lot of you might not <laughs> be up for this, that's one minute. All right, let's turn it on and see what happens. Good to go. No flashing. Too hot, too hot, too hot. I'm a baby. Too hot. But you got to be near your car, of course. <laughs> It'll overheat again within a few minutes if you're in Florida at 90 some degrees or Texas or Arizona. Mainly when you're shooting 8K video and 4K 120 slow motion. The good news is that even though it's overheating, you can always still shoot stills. Still shoot stills. Yeah, still shoot stills. My main goal in photography is always to get creative, but still want to get those portraits for my collection. And so here's some of my favorite bird portraits. Nothing fancy here. Just some clean shots, clean backgrounds, images, some behavior. As you know, I've been celebrating my lifers on this trip, but there's a few that the ABA will accept as a, a life bird that I'm not so sure of. And <laughs> here's a few of those, the red jungle fowl that's been in Key West, you know, since a long time. So they are countable. Egyptian geese in Miami area have been around since the eighties, I believe. And so they are countable. Yes, crazy. And Indian peafowl, naturalized in the Miami area and countable. So it kind of feels a little weird to count them as a lifer, but I'm going to do it, I guess. Now, Muscovy, also countable in the Miami area, but I've seen them in the wild uh, where they're native down in the Rio Grande Valley in Texas. Also had some non-bird highlights from the trip, including some cool dragonflies, the Halloween pennants, and the eastern amberwing. Uh, not lifers, we have them in Minnesota, but got some good photo opportunities. But a lifer, the four-spotted pennant in the Everglades. So that was pretty cool. And this beautiful moth. It's a tiger moth called the Bella moth or rattlebox moth. And when it flies, it reveals these gorgeous pink hind wings. I found that in the slash pine grasslands of Jonathan Dixon State Park. I got reacquainted with some old friends, the zebra longwing, the white peacock, and got some lifers, the Cassius Blue at the Key West Botanical Gardens, the Saronis Blue, for sure a lifer. Really cool purple, Florida purple wing, which was in the hardwood hammocks of Key Largo. They were quite common there. And this other lifer was in the same hardwood hammock at John Pennekamp, the hammock skipper. And this guy, this was probably my most wanted, the Atala. And I did not get this lifer out in the middle of nowhere in some wild pine barrens or something. No, I was stepped out of my hotel in Jupiter and was walking this narrow walkway between two hotels. And there were like three of them flitting around. A nasty thunderstorm was just hitting. The winds were just flailing the vegetation. There was lightning flashing, the first drops of rain. So I got this crappy shot at ISO 12,800. Then I threw on my flash and was able to get one halfway decent, I mean, not even decent photo. And then the storm just released torrents of rain. Had to run back inside. I'm kind of on a spider kick right now because to be honest, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. 
we are going to publish a field guide to spiders of Eastern North America. So I was like, yeah, I'll get all these spiders. Well, I really did a horrible job at finding spiders, but I did got some maybe better photos of Nephila clavipes, now called Trico Nephila clavipes. Got this lifer jumping spider, this big male Colonna sylvanus, gorgeous animal. Herp wise, well, I saw one, one alligator. That's it. And that one crocodile from the previous Florida episode. And of course, dozens and dozens of green iguanas. Uh, got tired of them pretty fast. But here's a lifer, black rat snake. I'm pretty sure this is a rat snake and not a racer. Um, you know, but feel free to correct me. And of course, got some new um, and introduced lizard species as well. The northern curly-tailed lizards were kind of fun. Uh, this one really had his tail curled up in a symmetrical spiral. Of course, the ubiquitous brown annals, although this one was showing off for me, and green annals. Not lifers, seen lots of them. Brown basilisk, I've seen them in Costa Rica, but never in the continental U.S. What is this thing? Is this a eastern spiny lizard or fence lizard? And also certainly saw some uh, lizards as prey items as well. With this boat tail grackle and loggerhead shrike. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for my next adventure. Probably going to be around home here for a while. But uh, Sag Zimbog. Oh, yeah, I'm going out to Teddy Roosevelt National Park in North Dakota here in October. And, yeah, hopefully come home with... Well, we'll definitely have a video for you guys.